This is Christine. She's walked 60 kilometers from her village in northern Uganda to stop her and a newborn baby becoming sick with AIDS. The disease already killed her husband. Five years ago, world leaders promised universal access to AIDS treatment by the end of 2010. But today, millions of people still cannot get life-saving medicines. And the money for treatment is running out. Christine had to walk so far because it has always been assumed that patients taking antiretroviral medicines, or ARVs, also need routine laboratory blood tests. These are used to check for side effects and to make sure the medicines are working. Many treatment programs stipulate that only centers which can do blood tests can hand out medicines. Do you receive any drugs? Is she taking ARVs? So for Christine, this was the nearest clinic. She says others in her village cannot make the journey. I try to persuade them to come for treatment, but they find it very difficult to travel this far. Some have died because of this. My sister-in-law died recently. She knew she was HIV positive, but she was very weak. She could not get to the clinic to do the tests and get treatment. In Uganda today, new patients are being turned away because funding for treatment programs is running short. This woman and her baby are both HIV positive. There is a place for the baby on a treatment program, but not for the mother even though she already has symptoms. She says she is planning to return to her village, which means both her and her baby will be severely at risk. If we are to avoid such scenes, we must find ways of treating more people for the same amount of money. For the last six years, I've been helping to run Africa's largest ever HIV and AIDS treatment trial, designed to help people like Christine to access medicines the results of which I believe will point the way forward for millions to access care. I have the honor to present the final results of the DART study. The DART trial stands for Development of Antiretroviral Therapy in Africa. It was obvious from the start that routine laboratory testing would be difficult. Clearly, if this was a requirement, it would be impossible in the African scenario given that uh, laboratories were not available in rural areas or smaller towns. Um, and, and this was very frustrating. The trial was a partnership between centers in Zimbabwe and Uganda, with the British Medical Research Council coordinating. All participants had three monthly blood tests, but half of them did not see their results, and more importantly, neither did their doctors. The trial was to answer the question, can ARVs be used safely without all the routine blood tests? The results of the trial were clear. Through doing this trial for over six years and nearly three and a half thousand participants, we now have a definitive answer to this question. The key results are that expensive routine laboratory tests, as are done in developed countries, have very little benefit for patients. This was particularly true for the routine tests for side effects, which have no benefit at all. The CD4 counts used to check the body's defences also have no effect for the first two years on treatment, and it's only after that that they have a small impact, a three percentage point difference in survival at five years. The study very clearly shows that the best way to use scarce resources is to treat more people rather than spend the money in doing very expensive regular blood tests. Because without treatment, only about 10% would have survived five years. With treatment, even without those regular blood tests, 87% have survived. So what does this mean for how we should be delivering treatment in Africa? First of all, we believe that all the routine liver kidney and other tests done to check for toxicity are unnecessary unless clinically indicated. Our cost analysis suggests this would allow many more patients to be treated. 
The picture for CD4 counts is more complicated. These are still needed to see when a patient should start treatment. We also found a small benefit for patients doing routine CD4 counts after the first two years on ARVs. This shows the urgency of developing simple and cheap CD4s which can be used in village clinics. This is just like a rapid HIV test, but it's a rapid test for CD4. And the idea with this, this may not be far away. These prototype CD4 tests which cost only a few dollars, are done with a pinprick on the finger. The results come in minutes. They are already being field tested in Africa and we hope will soon be widely available. Priority can now be given to training health teams to treat more people in rural areas, rather than building up expensive laboratories just for regular monitoring of HIV patients. This is a common dilemma for health planners. At this clinic, an hour's drive from Kampala, the laboratory is very basic. Until now, HIV patients have had to travel for routine blood tests, which they find expensive. So one option has been to use scarce resources to upgrade the clinic's laboratory just for HIV treatment. But the clinic also serves a large rural area where many people still need treatment. So another option would be to train staff at village health posts like this one to dispense ARVs and monitor treatment. We believe DART has shown this to be the best option. In a community health center like this, after we've trained healthcare workers and we are providing good supervision and support, we are able to provide HIV treatment to many more patients close to where they live. Of course, we are not arguing that Africa does not need laboratories. It's just that these should be used for all the acute illnesses for which lab tests are important and not swamped with routine testing of patients on ARVs. Breathe in, breathe out. Some have criticized DART because the research was carried out in centers of excellence with well-trained doctors. In busy rural clinics, the argument goes, routine laboratory testing might have more benefits, leading to a greater difference between the two arms of the trial. We strongly disagree with this. One hasn't got any reason to suppose that in a local clinic where clinical standards weren't so high that the differences would be any greater. In fact, it might even be the reverse because in centres where you haven't got such good clinical care, you may well have more difficulties in interpreting complicated laboratory results and acting on them. We do, however, need to invest in training to spread the knowledge we have built up on how to monitor without using routine lab tests. In doing the DART study, we have spent a lot of time training healthcare workers who had never treated people before in clinically driven monitoring. So if we could do it in the DART sites, I believe that it can be done in other health centers in Africa. Others have argued that not to do routine tests would set up two standards of treatment, one for rich countries, another for poor. This makes no sense to me. The size of the epidemic and conditions on the ground in Africa have no comparison to elsewhere. To insist on routine laboratory tests is to tell millions of Africans that they cannot have treatment simply because we do not have the laboratories that are available in wealthy countries. The carnage of HIV AIDS in Africa is continuing because there are still millions of people who are not able to access and benefit from life-saving treatment. The priority for me, and I passionately believe in this, has to be getting the medicines to people and maintaining the supply of medicines. Laboratory services routinely provided have a little benefit, but in terms of the overall impact on communities, the treatment is more important than the laboratory monitoring.